I'm now pleased to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Don Berwick, President Emeritus and Senior Fellow at the Institute for Healthcare Improvement and a former administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Dr. Berwick is a leading authority on healthcare quality and improvement. We're so honored to have him with us today to share his perspective on the potential for mobile technology to accelerate the redesign of the healthcare system and achieve the triple aim. Dr. Berwick? Thanks so much, Catherine, and thanks everybody for joining. It's a wonderful turnout for an exciting topic. Uh, although our focus is on Medicaid today, I'm going to say right at the start, I think the topic we're talking about has to do with healthcare delivery reform and transformation uh, right across the board. Medicaid may be the most charismatic or exemplary area to work on right now for a lot of good reasons, but this is about healthcare delivery as, as a whole. Uh, my comments are going to set the stage for the real experts who understand the use of this technology. Um, from the viewpoint of improvement, which is always my viewpoint, the first thing you need is aim, and I want to. I just want to touch base again with what I think is the social need. What all of the stakeholders, uh, uh, caregivers, uh, and clinicians, insurers, plans, everyone needs to rally around a set of goals, which were first described in 2007 and 8 by my colleagues John Whittington and Tom Nolan as the triple aim. This reflects what the social need is from health and healthcare system. It's better care, care as originally anticipated by the Institute of Medicine crossing the quality chasm. That's care that's safe, effective, patient-centered, timely, efficient, equitable. The second of the triple aim is population health working upstream against the causes of ill health and deterioration of health in chronically ill people especially. And the third aim is to reduce cost, reduce per capita cost, not through rationing or withholding anything at all, but to with but to re reduce costs through improvement. That, to me, is the goal that should be uniting us all across the board, so all stakeholders. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement, where I now serve as senior fellow, has begun uh, a, a program called the IHI Leadership Alliance, which currently involves 42 American healthcare organizations, and there'll soon be a European version of this, to work on radical redesign to achieve the triple aim. The, the fundamental idea here is really key, and that is that the current healthcare system, as it performs, as it functions, as it's designed, cannot achieve the triple aim. It's incapable of it. You could yell at it as loud as you want, but it can't get better care, better health, and lower cost. It wasn't designed to do that. From the viewpoint of quality improvement, my field, uh, the route to improvement is always redesign. It's always change, change of delivery. In our case, change of the way the healthcare system functions. You can yell at the system. You can change its incentives. Uh, you can wish it would be better, but nothing will happen until the care itself changes. And that's what brings us to our topic today. Now, the, the IHI Leadership Alliance has dealt with this in terms of redesign principles. I want to show them to you very quickly. This is 42 organizations coming up with a set of 10 principles which would provide the foundations for the redesign of delivery, much as an architect's drawing might have elements that will eventually amount to a house. Now, let me show you the principles quickly. The first one is change the balance of power from a professionally dominated, kind of professionally controlled delivery system to one in, profession, in which professions are in a far more equitable relationship with the people they serve. The second is standardization, not standardization of, of everything by any means, but standardization where variation doesn't make sense, where there's a right way to do it and it should be done that way every single time. But the third is an apparent contradiction, customization. It's customization to the needs of every single individual patient, family, community. That tension between standardization of what makes sense and customization to individuals marks a mature industry of any type and should mark healthcare. The fourth design is to move upstream, promote well-being through intervention, not just in the effects of illness, but in the causes of illness, which involves a reorientation of healthcare that's profound. The fifth is a bit of a surprise, perhaps. It has to do with the healthcare workforce. Uh, designs that demoralize or demotivate or exhaust the workforce are not sustainable, and they will not achieve the triple aim. Focusing on joy and pride in work is a design principle for the healthcare system of the future. The sixth is one of my favorites. It's make it easy. It's the identification of barriers, barriers to the workforce to get their job done right, and barriers to patients and families and communities to get access to help, both better health and uh, better health care. Um, this is one of my favorites. We had a make it easy week, a breaking the rules week. We called it uh, about two weeks ago in the Leadership Alliance. 42 organizations produced more than more than 350 ideas for rules that make no sense, things that could go away and thereby help them achieve the triple aim better. 
The next uh, principle is move knowledge, not people. That's the core principle we're discussing today. It has to do with revealing visits and admissions as often the dinosaurs they are, in which just as we access help in our lives through many media other than face-to-face -face encounters, the same potential lies in the redesign of care. The next principle is cooperation across boundaries, probably the fundamental rule for improvement. Uh, the last, and the next lesson is assume abundance. Stop asking for more. Uh, American healthcare, especially at 16, 17, 18 percent of gross domestic product, has much more than it needs to get the job done. And changing that mentality is part of the design. And then returning the money in the form of lower premiums to individuals, to labor, and to employers, and lower cost to government. These are the radical redesign principles being explored and put into effect by the IHI Leadership Alliance this year and in the years to come. I'll give you a quick example of what these look like in action. My favorite of all, possibly, is the South Central Foundation's NUCA system of care in Anchorage, Alaska. South Central is the uh, Alaska Native Corporation that owns and runs the care for 60,000 Alaska Natives. It's highly recognized for its achievements so far, and its achievements are stunning. They're all based on the redesign principles I just showed you. Fundamentally, for example, team-based care, highly cooperative care. This is the doctor's office at NUCA. It's a doctor you're looking at, but also a nurse and a, and a uh, nutritionist, a, a physical therapist, a behaviorist, a pharmacist. They all work together. NUCA is completely team-based care. That's a fundamental design principle. These are NUCA results between 2004 and 2009 for 60,000 Alaska Natives. 50% decline in emergency department use, 53% decline in hospital bed days and admissions, 65% decline in special utilization, and even lower primary utilization with enviable quality scores, employee satisfaction, and, and patient and family satisfaction. It can be done through redesign. Now, as I showed you, one of the core redesign principles in the 10 that the Leadership Alliance is pursuing is move knowledge, not people. It has to do with the development of non-visit-based care primarily, non-visit-based help, and investment in technologies like telemedicine and telehealth that help get that job done. Here's a stunning example of this at work. This is Project ECHO at the University of New Mexico, formed and led by Dr. Sanjeev Arora. Dr. Arora is the guy in the tie seated at the head of the table in the upper left-hand picture. Aurora is a hepatologist, an expert in hepatitis C management, who years ago recognized that as a referral specialist at the University of New Mexico, he couldn't take care of more than 1 or 2% of the hepatitis C patients in the state of New Mexico. But he thought that using what he calls force multiplication, this is extension of help out through telemedicine, telehealth, he could do better. Uh, the, small, uh, the small screens on this shot show you the, the direct synchronous connection that Dr. Rora has every week with literally dozens and dozens of primary care clinics, some just staff, nurse staff throughout the state of New Mexico, uh, in which care is being provided to people with hepatitis C, very technically difficult care, without the patient ever moving. The knowledge is moving out to the care providers in the periphery. Dr. Rora has covered the entire state of New Mexico, and by the way, other states now as ECHO has expanded with this kind of help, and not just for hepatitis C, now for HIV AIDS care, for suicide prevention, for obesity work, for uh, work on care of the frail elderly. I visited ECHO, and I've seen the studio. I've sat there as Dr. Aurora and his colleagues have coached uh, scores of uh, care providers uh, in many locations using tele what he calls telehealth, and the results are fantastic. At much lower cost, uh, Project ECHO is, for example, achieving viral eradication levels for hepatitis C with the ECHO patients managed only remotely, better viral eradication than for the patients to get referred to the University Medical Center. This is the future. Here's another wonderful example. This is a cell phone-based technologies. We'll soon be hearing from our other guests. Uh, this one is called PEAK. It was developed by young ophthalmologists at St. Mary's Hospital in London, England. It, through a simple device attached to a cell phone, they can now do retinal images, for example. This is a retinal scan being done on a man, I think, in Pakistan and being read at St. Mary's Hospital uh, in, uh, in England. Uh, the visual the quality, the quality of the image obtained through the cell phone is, is better than the quality of the image obtained in the multi-hundred thousand dollar machines at St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington, London. Uh, Peak is also uh, leveraging its, uh, its efforts by reaching out to workforce development, for example, they had a project in which they screened 10,000 children 
for visual acuity in Kenya, but the screening was not done by ophthalmologists or optometrists. It was done by their own school teachers uh, in less than one week using a mobile technology. This is the triple aim. It's better care, better health, and lower cost altogether. One final example I'll give you, I, I did it with a little caution because this is a for-profit effort as opposed to the others I've shown you, uh, is Lemonade Health, which was recently developed by a, a friend and colleague of mine, uh, 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 Bonnie Zell, uh, and I think it's a game changer. Uh, Lemonade has now identified, in this case, eight conditions which can be dealt with uh, synchronously and asynchronously by patients who log onto a website. This is not mobile phone. This is a website-based technology, but in very rapid order, uh, of management and, pharma, and uh, pharmacotherapy for acid reflux, for acne, for birth control, for erectile dysfunction, and so on, can be managed by Lemonade with highly certified doctors, high levels of quality, at a cost of $15 per visit, and I think they would like to have it be even lower than that. I think that's the future. Uh, this is about big deal, big deal redesign, the, the 10 principles of the IHI Leadership Alliance, for example. Uh, it's a migration, it's a transformation of healthcare from fee-for-service to global budgets, which allow, provide the, the economic foundation for what I'm showing you, a re-centering of healthcare from the hospital to the home. Uh, Kaiser Permanente uses the phrase, home is the hub, and I love it, it's a new system. From soloists who one by one deal with patients to high-performing teams, like you can see at the NUCA system in, in Anchorage, and moving uh, knowledge instead of moving people. Uh, beginning to understand that, that there's a modern age of information management which can completely revolutionize both costs and quality. It also is much more patient-centered. My colleague Maureen Visignano, the former CEO of IHI, says that we have to shift the system from one that asks the patient, what's the matter with you, to one that says, what matters to you? And I believe that these remote and telemedicine, telehealth technologies can be much more patient-centered, much more under the control of the person being helped. And by the way, we can stop asking for more. These are generally highly efficient systems that I think will leverage our dollars far, far further. I personally put out a goal for America myself. I'd like to see us get to 15 or 14 percent of gross domestic product and return that money to other uses. And we can do it if we're smart about redesign. That's the background I'd like to set. The real experts are uh, uh, the others uh, on this uh, webinar. I'll be remaining connected and look forward to questions and answers uh, later on in the show. But uh, back to you, uh, Catherine.